A massive amount of new solar generation in Australia has meant that demand on Australia's grid for electricity is at its lowest point in nearly 20 years. This means that wholesale electricity prices have come down by 60 percent. Pretty much exactly what Tony Severs said would happen. I know I keep saying this, but it's true. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. It's great to see you. I'm the Electric Viking. My name's Sam Evans. Electricity prices will drop significantly over the next five years. In fact, I believe by the time we hit 2030, people will barely talk about the price of electricity because it will be so cheap. Sounds crazy. It's very likely to be true. If we look at all the projects that are coming online, solar, offshore wind, onshore wind, battery energy storage projects, and even other renewable energy projects across Australia, it means there will be a massive excess in energy supply. Now you've got to combine that with the fact that solar is increasing its deployment at a record pace on households. In other words, you guys are being smart. You're doing the smart thing, going and getting solar on your roofs, especially now that solar has never ever been cheaper before. Efficiency of panels has improved, continues to improve. Solar prices continue to come down. And this means that it's putting pressure on wholesale energy prices. Wholesale power prices have fallen 59% over the past 12 months. That's despite retail prices increasing by up to 30% for customers in Eastern Australia, which makes no sense, but that will change eventually. New figures from the Australian Energy Market Operator, AEMO, which runs the national electricity market for the Eastern states, show wholesale electricity prices fell to $108 per megawatt hour in the June quarter, compared to the $264 per megawatt hour average seen last year when the national electricity market was suspended. 264 last year versus 108 this year. That's an enormous, enormous difference. AEMO's quarterly report noted there was an increase in black hole fired electricity generation driven by lower planned and unplanned outages in New South Wales, which is quite incredible considering the closure of the state's coal fired Liddell power station in April. The quarterly report though also said that renewable energy sources, in particular wind and solar, along with less volatile market conditions and improved generation ability had put downward pressure on wholesale prices. The drivers of those changes in the prices are threefold, said Daniel Westerman, chief executive of AEMO. The first is coal-fired power stations, which still supply around 60% of Australia's energy, are down because coal prices are down. The second, we've had more coal plant availability. So it's been there when we need it. The third, we've seen more and more renewables come into the system. Those renewables, as we know, really do push prices down. The decline in the wholesale electricity price is in stark contrast, bizarrely, to retail prices that came into effect from the 1st of July, with customers in some states paying 20 to 30% more on their power bills, which is insane. Energy analyst with the Grattan Institute, Tony Wood, said the recent increase in power bills for households was a delayed response to wholesale price rises seen last year, but it shouldn't be passed on. It's bordering on criminal. This report is all about wholesale prices, and that's the people we buy the, the electricity from, the retailers. They buy their electricity from the generators through the market, and AEMO operates the market, he said. The retailers are exposed to these price changes every day and they have to manage that, which is why some of them went broke last year when the prices went through the roof because they can't put their prices up to you and me instantaneously. So what happens is that as things settle down, we see all these costs were incurred. Mr. Wood said those costs were then included in the prices charged by the retailers, including those set by the Australian Energy Regulator, which took effect on the 1st of July. What does this all mean? It means that eventually these enormous cost declines of 60% on energy generation at the utility level will be passed on eventually to customers. All of them, possibly not. A lot of them, yes, they will. It's just gonna take a while for this to have an effect. I'm gonna guess around six months. Despite the year on year fall in the wholesale electricity price, there was a 31% increase between the first and second quarters this year. An increase of $25 per megawatt hour, making it the second highest wholesale price spike on record for a June quarter. The report said there were more high price events compared to the first quarter, largely driven by colder weather conditions, low wind levels, and outage driven transmission restrictions. But the wholesale price for electricity remains historically elevated compared to what would typically be seen for the same time period. That, of course, will change over the next 12 months. 
the amount of renewable energy coming online is significantly greater than what we've seen over the past 12 months. That's going to put more downwards pressure on prices. Mr. Westerman said that experts are saying that these high prices will be corrected in the long run as Australia moves towards our energy future, meaning that the more renewables we have, the lower price you'll eventually pay for your electricity. If you're paying anything at all, that is. This is going to be built on four things. The first is low cost renewable energy fueled by the sun and the wind and the water. That is Australia's lowest cost energy, he said. The second is firming generations. So batteries, pumped hydro and flexible gas generation. And just to fill out the peaks and the troughs of that variable renewable energy. The third is transmission, which is really needed to connect those new sources of energy to towns and cities. And the fourth is a grid that can run at times entirely on renewable energy, like some places in Australia already can. Winter power bill relief is unlikely though, this year. Next year though, it'll be a different story. Although annual wholesale electricity prices have fallen, it is unlikely to translate in the short term to hit pocket relief for individuals and families receiving their winter power bills in the coming months. Mr. Wood said the wholesale electricity market operated a year in advance of the retail market and the discrepancy was a delayed correction. So you'd be paying a lot less for your electricity hopefully 50% less this time next year. It's just a horrible coincidence. What the generators are doing is recovering the cost they incurred to try and keep the system more or less stable. And yet the wholesale price is now coming down, he said. So if nothing else changes, what we should see this time next year is the significant implications of lower costs being reflected in and a reduction in wholesale prices as well, meaning electricity prices should continue to decline every single year for at least the next few years. Mr. Westerman said lower prices would likely be reflected in bills in about 12 months time from now. Changes to household electricity prices in Victoria, Tasmania, the ACT and Western Australia are not set by the national regulator. The AER is expected to begin its review of the default market offer for the next financial year in 2024. What this means, there will be less volatility in electricity prices as Australia shifts towards renewable energy sources. Of course, there's always going to be sun, there's always going to be wind, there's always going to be the ability to store the excess energy in batteries. And as more and more batteries come online, which they are going to do so over the next few years, that will put even more downwards price pressure because those batteries essentially operate as Pika plants. Get rid of Pika plants, cost for energy comes down again. The best way to break that volatility is to decouple ourselves from international commodity prices, and that is renewable energy. When we're dependent upon coal and gas, we will see volatility. But the less we're dependent upon coal and gas, the less we'll see the international price shocks come into our home bills. Key takeaway here is electricity prices are probably at their highest point that they'll ever be. From here on in, we're gonna see lower prices continually for the next decade. At least that's what I think anyway. What do you think, guys? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Either way, this is actually really good news.